And this was a big thing for us because up till that point we'd been in a basement apartment sharing a bathroom. And you know as a couple when you have to share a bathroom you're always squabbling in the morning about who gets in there first, who gets to stay in there longest, and I'd always lose anyway. So this was a big deal because we had two bathrooms. There was one in the basement, there was one upstairs. The big surprise was that that basement was cold. And the washroom was particularly cold because there was no heat duct in there. And the window was about the size of a toaster. So in the winter, you'd have this frigid, dark little room, and it was really terrible. So I was in there one cold morning, and I thought to myself, I know what we'll do about this. And what I proposed was that we put our dormant fig trees into this washroom all winter. And what I would do is I'd shut off the water to the taps, I'd shut off the toilet, and then I would just stack all these dormant plants in this bathroom, one on top of another, nice and tight in there, and it was the perfect spot for storing all of these dormant plants. So there's lots of people that haven't grown up eating fresh figs, and I get the question often, well, why would you go to the trouble of growing figs? Yeah. And the thing about a fig is that once you pick it, it doesn't ripen more. And the ones that they sell in the grocery store, they have to pick them when they're less than perfectly ripe so that they ship well. So you can never get anything that's as nice as a nice warm fig that's perfectly ripe from your backyard. So in terms of how fig trees grow, this is how they want to grow. They are a messy tree. They will be a messy, scraggly bush if you let them be. They'll grow every which way. They'll sucker. Uh, it's, it's not a pretty tree naturally. Because I prefer a tree form. You're looking here at a tree with a single, a single stem. There's no right or wrong. You can grow your fig as a bush or as a tree. Uh, I told you about how I put all those figs into the basement washroom. Well, a bush is wider and I realized quickly that I couldn't fit as many bushes as I could trees into this small space so that's how it started out was just for storage reasons I thought a narrower plant and I can squeeze more into a small space if someone gives you a fig bush that has a number of stems you might be wondering well how do I make that into a fig tree and it's not that difficult um, you take your pruning shears and you, you prune off all but one main stem and fig branches are pretty pretty pliable and so you put a stake uh, beside the, the main branch and you can just tie it up, tie it up straight to the stake and, uh, and leave it there for a year or two until that wood hardens a little bit. And then you have the framework for, uh, for your main trunk. Once it gets to the height you want, you can pinch out the top and let, let it start to put out side branches. people have this idea that the fig is a, is a desert plant and uh, it wants to be starved for water. Yes and no. In the winter time when you have a dormant plant, the worst thing you can do is overwater it because it'll rot the roots. But in the summertime when your fig is actively growing, if you uh, cause it to dry out, if you don't water the pot enough, then very often you'll, it'll drop all the little fruit. So that's the worst thing you can do. So it doesn't like dry conditions in the summer. You want to water those pots. Sometimes it's daily, depending on how big the plant is and how big your pot is. Feeding. Feeding figs. So if you're growing your figs in the ground and you have a good fertile soil, you're amending it with compost, you don't really need to do much because the worst thing you can do is overfeed these. You get all this lush growth. If you're growing in a container though, you have to feed. It's like any containerized plant. So there's a there's hundred schools of thought on this. I have one friend who insists that it has to be rabbit manure. And uh, I have another friend who uses a slow release. And so there's lots of schools of thought. But the main message is you do have to feed if it's in a container. Another tactic to overwinter your figs is to put them outdoors and bury them. I had uh, somebody say to me at a talk once, they said, oh, 
I don't know, I gave up on figs. You know, it's so hard to bury them six feet under the ground. I said, six feet? What are you thinking? But uh, they had this idea that the fig had to go down six feet to protect it from uh, freezing. And of course, it can freeze when it's dormant. So here in Toronto, uh, you can very often just lay them on the surface of the ground and mulch, and that's more than enough to protect them. 